I want to um, organise this round a trade-off which is commonly understood uh, and talked about in the energy sector, known as the trilemma, the energy trilemma. Um, so we're going to have a lot of triangles, there'll be another triangle at the end. And so here's this standard, uh, here's an Escher picture of this uh, um, interrelationship, if you like, between the environment, carbon emissions, which we've just heard Andy talk about, um, security of energy supply, keeping the lights on, and energy costs, which are the prices that we're going to be actually paying for the energy. And just to say a little bit about that, um, I mean, th th there are all sorts of complicated relationships, but, but there are also some fairly straightforward ones that we can see here. Um, renewables to reduce carbon emissions tend to be more expensive in the short run, and so that's going to raise energy costs and prices. Um, in the intermittency of some renewable energy sources, the wind doesn't always blow, the sun doesn't always shine, um, may affect security of supply, you have to have backups and so on, and again, that can be expensive. <coughs> so, uh, in terms of security of energy supply itself, that backup costs money, and sometimes that backup may involve more carbon energy intensive fuels. So you may be backing up a renewable with something that involves more carbon. So you've got again this kind of interplay between the environment and the security of supply. Uh, and in terms of affordability, uh, either reducing carbon emissions or increasing security of supply, whether it's uh, through the mix of uh, energy that uh, sources that we have, or whether it's to make sure that the infrastructure to bring that energy to our homes and to uh, businesses is, is uh, up to date and, and so on. Uh, that all costs money, and the person who pays in the end is the energy consumer. So what are the potential changes that might happen from Brexit? As I say, I'm going to look at the sort of direction of change that we might see. Well, Andy's already talked about the environment we're probably going to see greater carbon emissions than we otherwise would have done uh, if we don't have to or and choose not to stick to European standards. And the European standards themselves will be changing. So it's not just the European standards today. Uh, there was yesterday a new package proposed by the European Commission uh, to become even more environmentally friendly. We're probably not going to adopt that. Uh, and, and as we go further into the future, uh, again, we're unlikely to be adopting as many, I would guess, uh, rules as uh, Europe will do. Security of supply, uh, we might, of course, by not having so many um, renewables, have greater security of supply. That could happen. Um, but more likely, the uh, being separated from the European market will remove and or make more expensive some of the backup trades that are currently there. For example, with France. Uh, we have an interconnector with France, um, and that may, the terms of trade on which we will uh, exchange electricity with them are likely to change, similarly with other connections to other parts of the continent. There's a particular issue in that the, uh, both the north and south of Ireland have a single energy market, and unpicking that is going to be interesting, probably won't affect us very much on this side of the country, uh, but I mention it because it is important in the overall um, energy picture. Affordability, well, people have talked a lot about how uncertainty raises the cost of capital, and it probably does, somewhat. Um, I'm one of my uh, roles is as a regulator actually in the water sector, not the energy sector, but we work really hard to get down the um, returns that the companies can make at the expense of consumers, and uncertainty raises that cost of capital. And again, it's going to be the consumers who pay for that. And if we are excluded from the European market, that's likely to increase our costs because it um, removes one possibility. Just some particular issues, and these pick up quite a lot of the things that uh, we've already heard about. Uh, one of which is uh, state aid. So the government may be much freer to uh, back particular industries, and it looks as if it's more likely to back 
carbon-based fuels and nuclear um, than it would be able to in state under uh, European state aid rules. Um, so that's likely to push up costs for the sorts of reasons we've heard. It'll encourage uh, greater inefficiency. Whether that will go on energy bills or on our taxes is not quite clear. Um, interesting, this new initiative yesterday, uh, which was very much focused on limiting coal and on reducing some of the subsidies that have been going to biofuels. So, again, exit from uh, the European Union is going to enable us uh, to do our own thing much more. That might be good if you believe that industrial strategy and picking winners is good. Uh, it might be less good if you think the government doesn't always get it right. I'm also not a macroeconomist, um, and so I don't have a lot to say about the macro effects from Brexit, but we do know that the exchange rate changes, um, though the pound has strengthened today on um, David Davis's comments, um, and in particular the fluctuations in the exchange rate are going to push up energy prices as well as other prices. We don't know what's going to happen to growth, but if growth in the UK and the EU both might fall as a result of Brexit, then energy demand will fall as well. It's closely related to growth. Uh, and usually prices fall if demand falls. So there may be a downward pressure on prices, but it will be because things are not going well elsewhere in the economy. The other thing is that not just the overall growth, but the balance of the economy might change. And so the demand and supply for energy might change. And again, that might result in changes in prices uh, in our own fuel bills. But I think the real um, clincher to what will happen is how the government will respond. Will it use the freedom it will have to introduce more regulation of the retail market. And I'll say a little bit more about that in a moment. If it does regulate, you may have strong views or you may have no views on whether energy prices should be regulated. Uh, some of them are about to be regulated again, having not been regulated since 2002. Um, but what tends to happen with regulation, and I say this as a regulator myself, is that the average prices tend to be higher if you're going to protect some groups, regulators are not very good uh, at managing markets, just as uh, people in uh, Eastern Europe were not very good at managing markets. Um, so if we regulate markets, we might find that although some groups would be protected, certainly the best deals would disappear. So if you're an avid switcher of your energy supplier, you would almost certainly find that those good deals weren't there anymore. But if you were somebody who didn't switch very much, you might find that you were paying a bit less. However that balance changes, the average price we pay would be likely to go up because of the inefficiencies that it would introduce. So the Competition and Markets Authority has suggested some price cap on those of us using prepayment meters, and the government might go further and try to extend that price cap to all of us uh, who buy energy in the retail market, and there is a minority report that would perhaps support them in that. Whether if introducing either of those is rather questionable under EU rules on retail regulation. Uh, and it's very interesting that we have signed up, indeed we, uh, in this area as well, we led the argument that we should deregulate the energy market uh, under the third energy package, which all countries have signed up to, uh, none of the EU countries should actually have energy regulation, but most of them still do. We haven't, we're probably about to reintroduce it for at least some, or well, we are introducing it for at least some consumers and perhaps more widely. So again, we've got this odd situation uh, where we have led the whole argument. Um, we, other people have said, okay, we'll do it and don't, um, but we so far have done it, uh, leaving the European Union would leave us much freer uh, to reintroduce that sort of regulation. So the Brexit would make government intervention much easier and broader regulation much easier. And as I say, that's bad if you're an active switcher. It might be good if you're an inactive person. So what are the implications for you as a world citizen? Well, you are likely to see 
uh, lower environmental standards. Uh, as a taxpayer, you probably see higher taxes, whether you'd identify them as such, because there will be more support to industry. As a consumer, there's probably a small increased risk of the lights going out, and uh, I hope I'm not going to hoax things now. I think the risk is still very small. Now, we don't need a power cut just to demonstrate it. Um, of course, there is a risk. The risk is never going to be zero, um, and, and probably Brexit will increase it slightly. Prices are going to be higher if you're active, probably lower if you're not. And what, we, what our own research increasingly shows is how different different consumers are and how differently we will each be affected by this sort of uh, change. So I've got another triangle here, slightly different. Um, as a world citizen, lower environmental standards, again, just summarizing what I've said, really. As a taxpayer, probably higher taxes. As a consumer, depends what sort of consumer you are. And I think in summary, this is a market that politicians find it very difficult to keep out of. Do you remember David Cameron's promise that we would all be on the best price in the market? It's a little while ago. Do you remember Ed Miliband's price freeze? Do you remember David Cameron and Ed Miliband? Um, that's another question. <laughs> But do you think such intervention is beneficial? If you're in favour of regulated markets, then I think you would think Brexit would give us the freedom to do that, and that would be a good idea. My own research over a long academic career uh, is not terribly encouraging about the ability of governments to make changes which don't have adverse, unintended consequences. But um, perhaps you've got a more optimistic view uh, and perhaps one thing Brexit might do is distract the politicians from interfering in the energy market. That could be a good thing. 